Okay, cheers. Cheers. Welcome everyone to the Mystic Sisters podcast. We are twin sisters, identical twins. I'm Julie. I'm Amy. And today we want to talk about something that we never wanted to have to discuss, um, but we wanted to talk about the degeneracy of the online right. Uh, if you've been following us, you probably know we've had political shifts over the course of our lives where we used to be very progressive and left wing. And then after living in San Francisco and seeing how some of those policies and ideas play out, we're more on the right now. Um, but even that box doesn't feel right, no pun intended, because uh, there is some disgusting behavior that we see on the online right. And we want to preface this also by saying that people, conservatives we know in real life are wonderful, caring, lovely people, and we're not talking about them. Uh, we're also not even talking about politicians. This podcast is really going to focus on the behavior of conservatives online, conservative influencers, social media personalities, uh, really the social media discourse that surrounds right-wing politics. And Anons, too. The, Anons. the behavior of the Anons on Twitter. So that being said, um, the worst behavior of the online right has been on display as we've browsed Twitter and interacted with Twitter and such lately. Um, Amy, can you explain what recently happened to you on Twitter when you pushed back on uh, Benny Johnson's tweet and how you think that illustrates the issues with the online right? So... I want to preface this by saying I wasn't thinking that hard when I did this. And this is the weird thing about Twitter is that you just kind of write and talk as if you'd be talking to someone in the room with you. And then suddenly it takes off and gets completely out of control and everyone's calling you curse words and it's just wild. So anyway, that's where I was at when I wrote this. But um, a video was going around of this woman being very, I honestly didn't even watch the whole thing. It was, honestly, I'll, I watched a couple of minutes. She was crying a couple seconds. She was crying because she, and shaking like this because, she, and this is a popular trend of women like videoing themselves being upset online, which I think ladies, you shouldn't do that. People are just gonna make fun of you. Um, but yeah, she was upset because she was walking in San Francisco and um, I forget what happened to her. Someone spit in her face. Something like Something that. Something like that. Someone was, you know, essentially assaulted, assaulted her on yeah. the streets of San Francisco. So, um, and she's like, why do I always feel unsafe in this city? I think that's why, when I stopped watching it. I was like, I totally had that inquiry. And that actually changed my mind about a lot of things. I wasn't a full on leftist when I lived in San Francisco, but I was like a libertarian. Um, but the unsafety there and the ideas that were mainstream there is a lot of big reason to change my mind. So I kind of, I don't know, my heart went out to her. I was like, I used to be like her. Uh, so I saw this tweet, uh, Benny Johnson, who's a big conservative influencer. He said, I see these videos and I don't feel a tiny ounce of pity. I look at the voting record. Did you vote Democrat? Did you march with BLM? Defund the police? Yes, yes, yes. Then you literally created the environment for this to happen to you. Stop crying. He's not wrong. Yeah. He's not wrong. But, but it's the tone. <laughs> and it's just like, I see this kind of content all the time. And it's like, honestly, boring, actually, and um, um, really formulaic. It's like, it's this the bullying technique of trying to bully people's bad ideas out of them. I don't think it works. So I said, conservative influencers alienate potential allies when they act vindictive like this. It's their worst quality assuming this woman is liberal because we don't know her voting record i don't know i didn't look into her um i think people online know who she is they i don't do know i don't know this always i don't care. um i said this could be an opportunity to reach her but instead you're bullying her you know um i was a left libertarian until i lived in san francisco conservatism is actually about restraining your impolite impulses to turn us away from animalistic ways to create a more civilized place this is neither civilized nor effective strategy and then I um, followed it up by saying, in quotes, we tell it like it is. The truth hurts is a bad marketing strategy. You need to be painting a beautiful and elevated picture. Demonstrate that your side treats people kinder than the left, not just be making pile on content for the people that are already on your side. So, yeah, I call this kind of thing like it's like kind of like porn for conservatives. Like people are logging on actively looking for something to be mad at. They're like, what's the left doing? And um 
I just think it's kind of toxic and grating on your soul. Um, so yeah, what should I say next about this? They, like, what took, happened after yeah, you tweeted? Yeah, yeah it, it took off and and people were calling me. They were saying F U B. Um, uh, you got totally piled. Yeah, on. I got completely piled on. It, it, it was so ironic because I was saying like this kind of pile on content is really mean and it's why maybe lurkers or people on the political fence don't want to be on the right. And they all totally proved my point by calling me names and uh, uh, telling me I was like stupid and that this is war. There's no room for compassion in war. Um, You've been nice to the left for too long and it's time to just you know, we have to throw punches and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I get how conservatives have like arrived there, but it's just not going to, well, it's not Christian and it's not going to win people over. And it, it kind of, um, I know that people have like COVID trauma and that was bad. So I understand being like, no more Mr. Nice guy, but like with like incidences like this, I think I, so this dovetails with this um, uh, data that's come out that um, very young women lean heavily liberal, like women in their early 20s and late teens. Um, so I think there's something to be gleaned here because like, why are most young women liberal? And then you guys are so mean like this all the time. And what, what nothing frightens a young woman away like a space that she doesn't consider to be like safe for her to be in, right? Bullies. So yeah, it's like a it's like a, a group of bullies really um in the online right. Um they really like just get off on being mean and nasty and um they can't even really properly identify their enemy. Like I'm not even their enemy. Like I I probably vote the same way they do um when I vote, but <laughs> um you know uh so yeah, I just think it illustrated my point even it, it just illustrated my point even more. I was like, you guys have this like bad strategy where you're not really um making something that is enticing that like attracts people to it that people want to be a part of. I think any good like marketer or um advocate or artist like just make something seem really nice and enticing and then it like pulls people in. Um, it, yelling at the problem just never works. <laughs> yeah, there's very little that's attractive about the online right. Um, yeah. it, and I mean that, like, they're not attracting people in. They're punitive. Um, when they talk to women, they actually inspire despair. Um, because a few years ago, the discourse online was very much about, like, you know, trying to encourage family formation and encourage young women to think about getting married and starting families, which is great. But ever since then, it's devolved into just this like degenerate discourse where conservatives are endlessly cruel to women about their age and they inspire despair about how they're going to hit the wall and they're never going to be loved and they're never going to have children if they don't just do this now or whatever like there's all this like insane messaging material and materialistic commenting on how women look and if they are losing their their fertility and like just really like weird creepy stuff um that's repulsive especially to young women and that would be impolite to say in real life like there's a reason people are like i only see this online it's like yeah offline we still have social norms of politeness online we don't so you see the worst of humanity because nothing's holding them back well, and it's like i've noticed that people who have their face and their name on twitter behave better than anons why because anons will experience zero repercussions for being a total jerk because you don't know who they are. So, and it's almost like God gave us a face and a personhood in a way to hold us accountable for our sin, right? Whoa. It's like, and and online, you can just get rid of your personhood and be this like faceless, nameless being that that demonic energy just courses through and you can just be terrible to people with zero accountability. I mean, it's, I get it. I get that people want to be a non-online because sometimes mainstream culture needs to be jammed and it's not safe to be a dissident. I totally get it. Um, that was absolutely the case during a certain, um, time period, let's say 2020. Um, I get it. Um, but to use that veneer of anonymity to, for cruel mockery is just really prevalent online. And 
I think what people aren't understanding is that conservatism is about civility, civilization. What does it mean to be civil, civilized, right? It means restraining your base impulses and not making unedifying remarks. And you're not going to attract anybody with your insults and cruelty, right? You're not building, you're, you're tearing down. And it's exactly what the right accuses the left of, that they tear down instead of build. And, and the online right does the exact same thing. They just tear you down, encourage despair, and and it, it it's just it's terrible yeah it's terrible. and then there's this crossover where these guys really struggle with women and it's like yeah like, you're not inspiring yeah, yeah. like you. what you don't seem like and yeah yeah well said julie good job yeah i see it all day all day long and it's yeah. like you know it makes me wonder sometimes like why am i even on twitter you know it's like, yeah well, you make friends you learn there are good parts of it but um so this, go ahead. There, there's um like I would make a distinction here between like degenerate conservatism, which is like materialistic and disgusting and bullying and mocks women and for their age and um is very hard on people. And uh then there's like a Roger Scruton conservatism, which is uh what is actual conservatism. It's um it's almost like those the degenerates have like infiltrated and occupied actual conservatism. Um, Roger Scruton conservatism is about yeah civility and uh, beauty and elevation and higher aspiring to higher ideals and it's more uh, rooted in the humanities and this is just like well it's classy I mean yeah you know, the way people act online is not classy at all um, yeah it's not edifying and it's it's degenerate like it, like society civil society has known that it is impolite to talk about a woman's age okay that was actually civilized and uh the right is degenerate they're like get it they're they're, they're tearing down that norm right. in, in an effort to bully women because they're upset about the birth rate or they're upset that women aren't getting married or whatever it is so i think they can just bully people to get what they want and scare them and they're degenerate in the process it's like that is not what civilization civility uh societies that inspire and elevate do that is not the move you've lost the plot yeah exactly and then i'm like should we even get into talking about like why the birth rate is low like and all the problem like and how the conservatives also have this idea that like men lead relationships and lead families and like lead family formation so by being like women today are terrible and that's why it's not happening well you're kind of putting women in the leadership position there and I thought men were in charge. Like, so isn't it more their responsibility to form these families and have these babies? Like, it's just, I don't know. Um, you can just so easily find this part of the internet where this discourse is going on. It's like Andrew Tate adjacent, like just disgusting and very, yeah, degenerate and nihilistic, actually. I think they don't actually believe in people. Like they don't actually, like this woman that I tweeted about, they don't actually have faith in anyone to change and be redeemed. Like I believe in redemption because like I feel like I've been redeemed. Uh, everybody has like bad things in their past that they're dropping and not doing anymore. Um, but I got a lot of responses to this about how hopeless these people are. They're hopeless. They'll never change. I'm like, I know tons of people that were on the left and now they're not anymore. Like it happens all the time. But what are you doing that's going to inspire and invite people in that are having that questioning? Like, you, it sounds like you have, you just have no faith in people right? <laughs> uh, to change. Like have a little more hope. And, and they kind of are forgetting that like, uh, politeness is a virtue and a mark of civilized societies because it allows groups of people to live together in peace and harmony right and but it's a healthy impulse to actually want to be around people who are polite to you yeah like yeah so i recently read uh, a thread someone that follows me on twitter well now i follow him um the matthew principal um i wanted to give him a little shout out because he had these really good threads on politeness and also on virtue signaling and status and the ascent of liberalism. And they're quite good. And it kind of relates to everything we're talking about here with the online right being vitriolic and cruel and punitive. Um, because he was basically saying how the right is constantly saying that the left virtue signals and how terrible that is, right? Okay, what is virtue signaling? 
signaling. It's showing off your superior moral qualities. Um, but his point was that this is actually natural and humans have always done this. And it's a way that you earn status in a social group, right? If, if somebody is happy and generous and fair and opens their door to guests and to strangers, they're considered virtuous and they're considered leaders. Um, so uh, liberal positions, uh, political positions are actually framed around virtues like generosity and compassion and openness. Um, they want to extend a helping hand to the poor and the oppressed. These are actually Christian values too, right? We're, we are instructed to be, to love thy enemy, to be compassionate, to be helpful to others, to be generous. Um, so like successful middle-class people have an incentive to be liberal because their policy positions, disastrous as they may be, appeal to virtues that confer status. So for middle-class people, it's better to be seen as supporting generous and compassionate policies rather than to even though they're not thinking about whether or not those policies actually work in practice, because um, they don't bear the brunt of those policies, right? Like, I think the example he gave was um, safe injection sites, right? Um, an upper middle class liberal would rather be seen as supporting compassionate policies than um, having to bear the brunt of what actually happens with a safe injection site, which is that you're enabling people, you're probably making the streets less safe. They had them in San Francisco. We can tell you there were needles all over the streets. It was not a safe environment for children, et cetera. Okay, so you're someone like in the middle class and you start to see the failures of liberal policies and you become more conservative. Well, what are your options? You hide it so you can keep status with the middle class or you lean into it and risk losing your own status amongst these people, right? And his point was that middle-class people typically choose the former. They just hide that they're conservative and hush, hush. Possibly why we have so many Anons online. I don't know. Um, it's definitely why. Yeah, but like lower income folks will just lean into it because um, they're not risking anything. They were never playing the middle-class game anyways. They don't ca care to have status amongst these people. Um, so then what do you get? You get this like moral aesthetic around conservatism, especially online, that's the opposite of liberalism. So it's... Oh, but it, it appears to be about selfishness, punitiveness, vindictiveness, the opposite of like generosity and compassion, right? And his point is basically that conservatives are going to lose if they don't align themselves with virtue and, and communicate their policy positions and their ideology as being about virtue, which is what the left succeeds at, right? When you think about liberal policies, you know, we all know that those their policies often aren't compassionate in practice. They often make things worse in practice. Obviously, defunding the police is not compassionate, um, but they have couched their beliefs in those terms, and that's why they win so many adherents. So if the other side of that on the conservative end is people who seem like they're punitive, selfish, inspiring despair, we're not going to win anybody ever. <laughs> like, yeah. You have to appear virtuous and polite when you're crafting your ideology. Classy. Be classy. Yeah. No one like you're being trashy. Like you don't want to, if you, instead of telling women that they're useless and their lives are over if they don't marry and have children. Or say, sneering. Yeah. Say we value children. Marriage isn't marriage so good. Children are so and, wonderful. And then be you like, and if, if this doesn't work out for you, we love you anyway. Yeah. It's okay. Like you're a worthwhile person. There's a like, place for you. In here. the eyes of God, we yeah. will take care of you. It's just like... I have this idea also that like if conservatives are like the higher ideal or like the actual like the better thing to be um there's something to be said for needing to like parent the left it's like you actually have to take like a kind of parental like role towards them and then I'm thinking like is this like good parenting to these lost children if these are lost children of god um how do you act towards them like do you yell and scream at them like I know like sometimes yeah. love you all their kids but like you know, I'm like, they're just going to double down if, you, if you're if you're going to be um, extremely cruel to them and bully them. And especially with like women, women do not respond to bullying. OK, men, men do. I think in male groups, there's like a bullying that goes on and it kind of shapes men. But um, women don't respond to that at all. So uh, not a good technique to use. And we had a guy ask us, uh, are, why can't we bully women? And I was like, are you really asking me this question right now? Like there are men on the right who are legitimately asking us why they can't bully women. We have a problem. Yep. <laughs> you have a problem. Ridiculous. You have a problem. It's ridiculous. And it's like, so then what's the effect of all of this, right? Is the online right attracting 
happy, successful people. No, they're attracting resentful, unhappy, unsuccessful people. And then nobody wants to join the club. And then all these people are like, like us are like politically homeless because yeah. like, I, yeah, because if you're like you and you point this out, you get just dunked on it, and it proves the point. And it proves the point. Yeah. And like, um, even, even yesterday I saw a video going around of a woman who, um, well, a guy made a snide comment about her and was like, what's with like her physiognomy? What is she? This is like Nickelodeon physiognomy. I don't even know what that meant. I watched the video and this woman is like overweight, but she's being super nice to everybody that she's encountering. She's um, she owns a coffee truck and she's serving coffee like, hi, friend. Hello. Oh, it's one of my favorite customers. Like super cheerful. Absolutely. I would love to get coffee from her. Um, she was having a great time. And, you know, this like right wing account retweets her or quote tweets her, says something about her appearance just bullying again yeah. like th there's nothing wrong with what she was doing like your your ideology is just like now it's cl it's clouded your vision entirely and you don't even know how to identify kindness someone called him unfit for company i was like that's wow. exactly what you are like yeah it's like like we can you're we... so online and looking for cortisol hits and things to be mad about and looking for cringe and looking for cringe that you now you're blind like you you can't even you just totally desensitized yourself it's gross <laughs> Anyway, what were you saying? Um, yeah, um, we, I kind of lost the thought, but basically just, it's okay. not inspiring, right? And oh, well, I was going to say that we can, we can be people who uh, communicate that it is good to be healthy, to be fit, to work on your physical health, um, whatever it is, to have a family, to have that, whatever it is, without like driving people down, without shaming and uh and and being cruel and vindictive it's, it's more possible to have your values or when someone's like lost and a leftist and then they are hit with the consequences of their actions instead of being like you made your bed sleep in it and like sneering at them and like running victory laps it's like that's a teachable moment you could like get in there and be like you know, I used to think like you or, um, or like, here's why this is happening. Like, it's just also, it, no one's it friendly reminds anymore. Me, well, it reminds me also that when I was on the left, my dance instructor would sit me down and ask me questions. She'd be like, oh, you think, I don't know, what, what was the so, big feminism? And it was a lot about feminism. Oh, you think we live in a rape culture? Please explain. Like, why? And she'd be like, oh, I'd love to hear your point like, of view. I'd love to hear your point of view. And she was my friend first. This is of critical importance. She was my friend first. She was there for me we had fun together she was um supportive generous with her time genuinely her open advice, genuinely open even though we had different political beliefs and so when she did inquire with me I started to realize that I didn't have sound logic for some of my beliefs and um it was really impactful and I ended up changing some of my views that coupled with life experience um but imagine if she'd done this to you yelled at me stop crying yeah i have but, no compassion, I have no, compassion. No, like, I have no pity yeah that no. would work you know well. like just so then it begs the question like are you guys interested in actually like winning and converting people or are you just interested in like uh you know getting getting off on like your anger like um a priest said this once that some people are so steeped in anger and I hate those people. They don't even know they're living in it. Yeah. Like they're just living in the sin of wrath and they have no clue. And something that struck me as well is that like, I've definitely seen the online left dogpile people and go after that. This is what cancel culture is, right? It's like you go after somebody for something they did wrong and then you cancel them and you dogpile them. We've all seen that happen like on the left online, right? Um, where they come out at you in a mob. The mob like phenomenon on online is just honestly crazy. But uh, if you've ever been on like the receiving end of it or, or seen it happening to somebody, I mean, it's nuts. Um, but it was crazy to watch your tweet go and it was the exact same behavior. It was a right-wing mob. It was nuts. And I was like, yeah, okay. they mob too. Yeah, you mob too. And it's um, really eye for an eye. It just yeah. becomes eye for an eye. Well, they do it. So I'm doing it. It's like, round you need to round. rise above. Here's your, here's your dialectic. Third, higher, middle way. That's what you should be aiming for. Yeah. If you care about your soul, if you don't, by all means, like, go ahead and like yeah. be a terrible person. But like, I happen to think that like, I guess it all does go back to if you believe in God or not. Like, I think that you can't really separate what you do online, even if you're a non from your actual soul yeah. and your, your actual like accountability. Like it doesn't 
being a non isn't actually real it's you not a said license you said to sin. and god saw it yeah, yeah it's not like license to sin exactly that's a good way to put it yeah um so you um also so, and, and a lot of i'm just saying this because a lot of conservatives in this country are christian so it's like are you guys really christians like yeah don't act like it. so you were also saying there's like a contradiction on the right because they say women should be nurturing and compassionate. Right. Um, but then... Yeah, so yes, I noticed this contradiction where they, a lot of, there's a lot of talk of like ideal gender roles and ideal fulfillment of masculinity and femininity on the right. But then there's this contradiction where the right like wants women to be like compassionate and nurturing and emotionally in tune because these are good qualities for like you know dealing with children um but then when you add you actually demonstrate those qualities and act compassionate they hate you and and dogpile you and jump jump on you like you know so (laughs) i'm like what do you actually want of women do you want do you want us to be like um fighting warriors yeah. or like or do Taking you want us and- uh, yeah like do you want yeah. me to advocate for people's head on a stick or do you want me to actually be, be a like woman. a woman like <laughs> it just doesn't I'm like yeah I'm gonna be like I feel bad for that girl I, I don't know I was reading a book um of uh the the lead singer of this band Flyleaf she uh I liked her music when I was a teenager and she converted to orthodoxy and um she was at the show once they were a Christian band but they would play in spaces where uh, people were not Christians. This was like hard, like metal shows, punk. Um, I think mostly emo. like metal and emo. Wow. Yeah. And um, they and she had this idea of like evangelizing in those spaces because she was like, that's where I'm going to like reach people who were like me, who were just like nihilistic and lost. And um, she would sing her music there. And after a show one night, uh, a woman came up to her and was like, I really liked your sound. It was really different than... Um, any of the other bands and the lead singer was like oh you know I was like praying for the crowd and I prayed for you and this this woman just lost it she was like I don't oh you're Christians that's disgusting I don't need anyone to pray for me and she like stormed off and the lead singer in this book was like I learned to like take a different approach but I loved her because she reminded me of myself I just I loved her so much and I was like, that's really interesting. Yep. And that's how I feel looking at this woman who's like a liberal and is like, I'm, why is San Francisco so, it's like, yeah, I love you. I was yeah. like that too. Yeah. Like, You're me. You are me. Yeah. So, and yeah. maybe it's easier to be smug and self-righteous if you've like always been a conservative. You're like, I always knew the yeah. truth. But like, not all of us did. We had our humbling experiences. So, yeah. Um, But in my, my, I have a good friend, um, an internet friend um and uh her account is orphic incendants and um uh i don't think she's a christian but she's very very wise and she uh i was talking to her about this and she said that righteousness can be a drug most of the people dunking on you do not have convictions or elaborate philosophical systems that they follow and then she said a collection of beliefs prejudices and political opinions isn't a system they just love the high they get from punishing sinners exactly that's exactly right and that's how they treat women if you're not married with a bunch of kids by 30 they'll punish you punish with you. despair and with cruelty um and they're not going to convert anybody that way Mm-mm. um all it does is make these like perfectly young and beautiful women freak out and panic yeah. oh my god these guys are saying this and i'm like wow these are terrible leaders of men if if if, if they these, want that though they, they want, want that. women to suffer yeah because yeah, i think it's coming from like guys who have all like maybe uh just have a ton of resentment and aren't successful in their own lives because why would you say that to somebody if you yeah. were successful in your own life it's so weird too because like everything we're talking about would not make sense to anybody who doesn't spend time on twitter uh this is not oh. real life stuff like when you go out in the world, you don't hear these types of things. You don't encounter these types of people. Um, it's a little concerning that the internet uh, reveals that which is under the surface. Seemingly, these cruel people are out in the world interacting with people. Maybe they're even at church. Maybe they're in your workplace. I don't know. But like the stuff I see on Twitter disturbs me because I'm like, when I go out in the world, people are kind and they're very sweet and they'd never say these cruel and impolite things um, because their face, their personhood gives them accountability. But the, the fact that this disgusting behavior is like under the surface for people, um, it's concerning. And I'm often just like, who are these people? They're walking around. Right. And it's, it's scary. Like, I'm like, you have like a bloodlust. Yeah, <laughs> like they're out there. Like it's freaky. Uh, I want to also say that like Jordan Peterson talks about 
this um and he gets so much and, crap and he for gets it. so much crap for it from like my side of things where people are like well, people are gonna lose their jobs I'm like but he has a point like he has a very he real point that he says it enables the dark triad personality which is like the end of a of a spectrum of personality disorders where you're like sociopathic narcissistic? narcissistic yeah, yeah. and um, i might have got that wrong forgive me but um he's totally right <laughs> like, you see it. if yeah. you're somebody who has your face available online and you speak your thoughts under your own persona you will see these people that come. Yeah. they don't they don't um create a lot of them don't create themselves some of them do a lot of them don't they're reactionary or they're parasites um, they're parasites they like feed off what other people create and criticize and um uh, it's a weird phenomenon. I'm very concerned about this as well as we get like deeper into our like AI situation um, that we're barreling towards in our society. Um, well, I, people are only more online. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, people, people are only becoming more online. I wanted to say that like we live in this small town and there's like older people around us and we notice that like our generation doesn't keep up our lawns as well as the, the older generation. And I'm like, man, I like want to keep up with all this yard work, but why is it so hard for me? And then I'm like, oh, they're not as online as we are during the day. Like we're really like reading and socializing and using our computers and our devices a lot. And they're just not because they're in a different generation. They're not used to that. Then I, and they're not used to that. So the, what do they do? They do their lawn care. Not that our yards are like a mess they, or anything, keep, but it's immaculate. No, but they keep busy with much more productive and wholesome hobbies than yeah. reading than just fighting demons on the internet like I do. Like, but if you're someone like us and you're interested in ideas and socializing, Twitter is very enticing, right? It's hard. It's a hard habit to break. So, yeah, I'm very interested in like what makes a civil society. And then you log online and it's like, this is fundamentally uncivilized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yep. like the, you know, the it's, rules it's, that people won through hard knocks over years and years and years of practice are just like all just disintegrated and degenerated on the internet. And it's super ironic that the people who prefer to be so angry about how degenerate San Francisco is, how uncivilized it is, how unsafe will treat people this way. It's hilarious. It's like, oh. Okay. I hit a nerve and I think and it was a nerve that like needed to be hit. I'm like, you got, no, yeah. like this, uh, yeah. Like if you want a good, healthy, civilized society, like you need to, you just need to act better. If you need to be better, especially towards people who disagree with you. Love thy enemies. It's sort of like, you know, the person who like tweet treats the waiter bad. Like it's like, cause they see them as like, I don't know, beneath them or wrong in some way. It's like, tell a lot about a person like yeah it's like the way they think maybe they think the left is beneath them but then so they are punitive and cruel i mean yeah it's like maybe just because it, someone's a liberal doesn't mean you have to be a jerk to them there are some liberals i'd way rather hang out with than some of these people on the right because they're actually like sweet and kind you know yeah I mean, <laughs> because i think that a person's um character doesn't have anything to do with their political beliefs right that's what we're really getting at is yeah. that just because you are, in my opinion, correct about some of your policy positions um, or your ideas about how to like organize society from a governance standpoint doesn't mean that you have good character. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, like what matters more is how you actually treat, treat people, people, how your character is. Because you, know? you should, I think like <clears throat> as a Christian, you're called to treat like everyone with dignity, no matter what. And if you're dehumanizing people because they don't share your political beliefs, you've just totally lost the plot. And that's not really what you're called to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's what we wanted to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> just been that's our little rant. It's been, I don't know, I didn't intend to see this. Like, um. it's, it's been disappointing, actually, to have been in these spaces for so long and then just really um, see know. the nastiness and the, the nasty, cruelty yeah. and and I guess you could also look at it as like, there's a lot of hurt there. Um, people have very valid like grievances. Yeah. They're upset that cities are a mess because of these, val you know, yes, values these policies. That, policies that they don't like. That's, that's all valid, but you can't really like lose your composure. Yeah. Over it and then start to dehumanize people. It's just like, then you're not actually yeah. helping anything. Yep. Totally understand how people got that way, but it's not an excuse. Uh yeah, it's really not an excuse. Um, 
And keep in mind, we're women, so this is what we think about the book. But you know, all the men fighting their political battles might disagree. But that's <laughs> just what I think. <laughs> if you want to win over women, if you want to win over liberals, we got to stop with this. You got to send a better message. Send like, a better so, message. Uh, what? How do you think that the right could do better at like being attractive? Let's say, like, well, um, I think that. You know who comes to mind is um, Simon Sarris's account. Like, I guess you, he's not political, but you could say that he has like traditional like values, and he uses like photography and art to p- paint this like beautiful picture. And people are like, oh, I want that. Whatever's like around that is good. Um, so you know, I think being more like creative and artistic instead of reactionary is a good idea. Why like, does he post pictures of? Um, he posts pictures of his home and his family and his babies and his wife and things he's building. Things he's building and um his kitchen and you things know the, the countryside things he's cooking. Yeah. It's just like these are all like good things. So um the right needs more creatives and less like angry commentators and uh, reactionary reactionaries, but creating is hard. So it, that you see like less of it, it's way easier to see something and dunk on it than to actually like make something that stands on its own. Yeah. It's the same problem on the left. The left loves to tear down instead of build, right? They like to they tear say, down that structure like Simon's yeah, posting. They yeah. say, tear down the family, tear down the police tear down the borders like it's the but like the right like has to be better than that if they really do have a a vision of a better society like convey that vision you know instead of just dunking on the left and pointing out how terrible the left is it's like we need a better we need vision and yeah that's the whole thing with this country right now is just like lacking vision and leadership we have you a know. huge like leadership crisis like yeah people aren't leading because leaders have vision and, and they go, they we're going this up. way. They say, we're going this way. And they, they go, we're going this way. Come with me. And yeah. they like, they're like, oh, I'm going to go with yeah. them. And also like a lot of the r- online writers really whiny and like, they're like, these like people won't follow me. I'm like, but you're like whiny. Like, do you think a good leader is like, oh, like they won't follow me. They just like, inspire. like attract and inspire and people conform to them. It's like, it's a hard thing to do, but not impossible. Plenty yeah. of people have done it. Um, you know, and I think people really understood these conservative values of the past. You can see it in their like, like their building and um, old art, old architecture is a good example of just inspiring beauty and um, the values that created it. Yeah, you want like the essence of your being to be beautiful, so that then uh, and and pure, uh, so that and we're all like that's kind of how I perceive the essence of like Christianity is like trying to root out sin and ugly things that are within me um so that I can shine God's light right be a gardener of your heart yeah and so yeah exactly get out the weed remove the weeds grow something beautiful allow flowers to grow um and then you'll get people to join you yeah but I guess it's like I guess maybe it's a talent I don't know I think it can be cultivated though I think I think it can be you know, not everyone is like the most charismatic person or the most creative, but like you just do your best and hopefully that has like an impact in like whatever your your arena might be. So more creativity, less of this like absolute like degenerate, like dunking nonsense. <laughs> That's all we're saying. So all right. I think we should wrap up. Okay. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to our rant. Um, we are on Substack, uh mystic sisters.substack.com. Uh, we're also thinking about becoming Mystic Twins instead of the Mystic Sisters. I don't know if you have thoughts on a rebrand, leave a comment. Yeah, um, it would be the Mystic Twins or the Mystic Sisters. Yeah. We went to a twins festival and everyone was calling us the Mystic Twins. So that's for another podcast, though. Yeah, we'll have to podcast on that. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. See you next time.